rotating slower than the carrier. This can occur because the pinion on the inside walks around the side gear. However, there is a drawback. Transaxles have conventional differentials. This means that each drive wheel receives the amount of torque required to turn the wheel with the least traction. So if one tire is spinning in mud or snow and the other tire is on dry pavement, the vehicle will still not move. This occurs because the carrier pinions walk around the side gear with the most resistance, while the wheel that is spinning gets all the power. For more detailed information on transaxle operation, diagnosis, and service, stop the tape and read Lesson 5 in the Self-Study Guide. After completing the review questions, restart the tape and view Lesson 6. Transferring power from the transaxle on a front-wheel drive vehicle to the wheels is quite a complicated task. This is due to the fact that the wheels not only must be able to respond to suspension action, but also must be able to turn in order to steer the vehicle. This power transfer is accomplished using special drive axles called half shafts. The half shaft uses constant velocity, or CV joints, to allow for the length changes and steering angles of the driving wheels. There are basically two types of CV joints. The inner CV joint allows for all the length changes and some of the angle changes, while the outer CV joint allows for the rest of the angulation that is needed for smooth power transfer. Let's look at each of the components of a typical half shaft. Ford uses two types of inner CV joints, the tripod type joint and the plunging ball joint. The tripod type joint has a three-pronged joint fitted with special rollers which ride on needle bearings. This joint is splined to the half shaft and slides in and out along a special outer race called a tulip housing. This provides for the length changes required. The plunging ball type inner CV joint uses caged roller bearings that ride in an outer race. The movement of these balls inside this race enable the shaft to change length. The shaft portion of the half shaft is either a solid steel or hollow steel shaft. Both ends are splined with grooves that allow installation of snap rings and circlips. Some vehicles require the use of an intermediate shaft. This shaft eliminates torque steer, which is a pulling at the steering wheel during acceleration. A rubber-mounted, lubed-for-life hanger bearing is used to support the intermediate shafts. As previously described, the outer CV joint is splined to the outer end of the half shaft and drives the front wheel hub. To allow the outer CV joint to pivot during turns and for suspension action, caged ball bearings are fit into an outer race. A critical item on both inner and outer CV joints are their rubber or plastic boots. These boots enclose the open end of the joint to protect them from contamination. They also retain the special lubricant that the joints need to operate. As long as these boots are not torn or damaged, the joints never need maintenance. This completes the video presentation of the Manual Transmission Self-Study Course. Remember that this is only the first of the three Manual Transmission Courses. Schedule yourself for the Ford Multimedia Manual Transmission Course.